Well, hello, welcome back. Um, this particular video, it's going to be pretty short and kind of a continuation on the last one uh, where you were learning how to read a triple beam or a quad beam balance. And for those of you that have been in school, you had a chance to actually use a balance uh, to measure the mass of a block. But in today's video, I'm going to have you consider how you would go about measuring the mass of a liquid or a ball or something that doesn't sit nicely on the pan of a balance. Or sometimes the thing you need to measure just won't sit nicely on a scale. For example, if you had to measure the, the weight of your dog and you had a big dog or the dog just wouldn't politely sit on the, on the scale. So how would you do that? Well, that's the idea here. So I'm going to take a look first at a liquid and then um, we'll talk more generally what you have to do um, if what you need to measure won't just sit very nicely on your balance pan. Okay, so here we go. Well, here's a little diagram to kind of show what you need to do to find the mass of a liquid. Obviously, you need a container to hold the liquid in when you put it on the balance. But you don't want to include the mass of that container in the mass measurement for your liquid. So what you do is you have to first figure out what the mass of your container is before the liquid goes in. Okay, and so that's here in the middle of our figure. And let's just say, for example, that's 160 grams. Then when you put the liquid inside of it and everything is just as it was before, except that the liquid is now included. So you've got the stopper, the little cap on it, and everything else that was on the, be uh, the balance before still has to be on it again. If it goes up to 175 grams, then the difference must be because of the water that you added or whatever liquid it happens to be. So in this case, you take 175 grams minus 160 grams, and you would see that you added 15.0 grams of the liquid. Okay, so that's the idea. You just have to know the mass of everything that's on the balance except for what you're trying to measure, and that gets subtracted. Okay, so let's look at another uh, example of this too, because um, it might look a little different if you have an electronic balance. Well, here's a picture of an electronic balance. Definitely a little easier to use than a triple beam balance is because it's all digital and you just put the thing on your scale and you see what it weighs and, or what its mass is and that's that. Some people have these in their kitchens. It makes for convenient for measuring out ingredients. But usually you need a container in which to hold whatever ingredient you're measuring. So we call this a weighing boat in the science lab and it's empty right now. But imagine you're going to pour something into that but you don't want to include the mass of the boat as part of your measurement. And so what you do is, and this is what you see the finger pushing here, there's a button that says tear, T-A-R-E, or in some scales, it'll just say zero. And when you hit that, it takes into account everything that's already on the, the pan and zeros it out. And then anything you add to it will just increase it from there. And what this means is you don't have to do the subtraction step. That's all that's doing for you. Uh, here's a picture of kind of a close-up of what a tear button might look like on a different scale. So I want you to know what that word tear means. So let me kind of describe that and we'll write it down and you'll get that in your notes. Okay, so this word tear means the mass of everything on the scale except for what you are measuring. So again, the idea is if you're using an electronic scale or electronic balance, you just have to hit the tear button. It automatically will subtract it for you. Send the scale back to zero for you to add your ingredients or your liquid or whatever your object is. But if you're using something like a triple beam balance, you simply have to write down the measure of the tear and then subtract it after you've found the measure of the material plus all the containers. Sometimes this is, like I said, a weighing boat. Sometimes you put a little cover on your balance pan to protect it. Sometimes it's the, the container to hold the liquid. Sometimes it's just something to keep the ball from rolling around. But whatever that is, you have to subtract that. So in our first example, the 175 had the water plus the flask. 
the 160 grams was the tear in that case. So we subtracted it, all right? So um, that's the idea too. Now, I use the example of how you would measure the weight of a dog. Well, I have a big dog that doesn't sit nicely on a scale. So what I do is I scoop the dog up and I stand on the scale with him. And then I put the dog down and I find out what I am all by myself. The difference between those is the weight of the dog. So in that case, my own weight is the tear weight. Okay. So if you've heard that tear word before, now you know what it's referring to and how to use it when you're doing a measurement. All right. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. We'll be ready to go when you're in the lab.